What the? <laughs> Welcome to my life. Sorry, I had sleep last night. <laughs> yeah, barely. Okay, <laughs> want to share some of your good sleep? Shh. Recording in three, two. Hi, I'm Christopher DiCarlo, and I took a left at the valley. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith in unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. <laughs> Right after escaping Hades, this is Left of the Valley. My name is Kevin, and a man cannot live on bread alone. You also need peanut butter, too. And, and that bread better have gluten, guys. <laughs> Can't handle it if it doesn't. Joining me as usual is a team that wonders, why you call a rush hour if nothing on the road moves? Mm. That's a really good question. It is. <laughs> She'll tell you that all general, generalizations are false, including this one, Nancy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wait a minute. There, all of a sudden, I realized that the last two words were false, Nancy. Are you making a statement? No, 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 no. A subtle statement? I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> and she'll tell you you're only as good as your last haircut, Christina. Yeah, because hair is important, guys. <laughs> I should know. I have a ton of it. <laughs> and she always wanted to be somebody, but now she realizes she should have been more specific. Kirsten. Yep, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, welcome back. Yeah, it seems like just the other day that yeah. we were here together. It's yeah. been a fast week. <laughs> yeah, not even a, just a couple of days ago, we did a show with um, Brad Dirks. I, I keep wanting to call him Brad Verks. I'm so sorry, Brad. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, he's a verk to me. Uh, but uh, we did a fantastic show about his uh, his uh, battle with Soji One Two Three. What a and, great guy! Yeah, what a great guy! Yeah, and it, I hope it, to bring listen, back again. Everybody should listen to that bonus, um, that bonus program episode. that we Absolutely. had. Well. All right. So today we'll be talking to Robert Stanley of the Right to Reason podcast. But before that, let's do a bit of chit chat, guys. That's a great moment. Oh, it boy. is four years. Can you believe this? No, I can't. Doing this little show for four years now? No, it, it only feels like half a year for me. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's not the length of time; it's the impact you had. Yeah, no, we've had some. We've really had. We've had, we've had a great time through the four years, but we've had some more outstanding shows than not. Yeah, we, yeah. And uh, I'm always amazed by how this little podcast has brought some. Tremendous guest on the show, oh, and we've absolutely. talked to some amazing, amazing yeah, people. Yeah, and I, I, I keep thinking that if not for this little show, my life would have been so much more boring. Yes, yeah. so much more boring. <laughs> I mean, we've I can't learned even, a lot. I can't even. We? Yes, I can't even imagine how the hell I would have met somebody like Matt Dillahunty or or James Randi or anything like that. You yeah. know, so. The Fantastic. Great, the great thing about it, too, is that we've had all of these wonderful scientists and authors and activists and um, um, a- atheists and humanists, and they've all been gracious enough to say, sure, I'll come on yes, your show. Yes, And, you know, that to me, the willingness to share their information and be so open, it, it's benefited everybody. It's, uh, we've had great guests. That's Some of them have become guests. actually good friends. You know, I'm yeah. think, for example, of... David Fitzgerald. How many times has David Fitzgerald been on the show? Not enough. Yeah, well, you're right. Not enough. But he's been on several times to the point now that yeah. you know he's, you know, he knows full well. As soon as something happens, hey, Kevin, I'm writing a new book. Here. You want to talk about it? Sure, let's bring you on. You know, and if he comes up here, we'll go have a beer or something with Arn Raw. You know, and Daryl Ray. And Daryl Ray. My yeah. God, Daryl. Daryl's invited us to his place in Kansas for a party. You know, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit of a while to go there, Daryl. Daryl, but you know. It's amazing the community, how it's been responsive to even a little Canadian podcast like ours. Yeah. And I can remember, let's take a little trip down memory lane. When we first started, uh-huh. Nancy, and you you came in soon after we first started, man, was the show rough. <laughs> it was so well, yeah, rough. Yeah, but that's the, that's the way all things are, you oh, know? Yeah. I mean, the Wright brothers didn't go up on the first try. You know, they, they had a little trial and error. Yeah, well, so, a lot of it was my fault because, you know, I had it no not idea. Fault. It's learning. It, there was it no was a fault. big learning curve, exactly. Learning curve. But the show is getting better and better as we get along and you know and we're finding out some quirks here and there and of course I'm learning too which takes me a while but eventually I do learn so 
It's been a, a hell of a trip, and uh, let's hope yeah. we can keep it going for a while there. A lot of fun, and I, I hope the audience enjoys it as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's the hope. You know, we do it We do it for two reasons. Well, we do it for three reasons. To, to be able to learn as much as, as we can from the, from the best possible guests, you know, to entertain and inform the audience, and to have a hell of a lot of fun yeah. while we're doing it. Yeah, and, exactly. and I think we're doing... I I think we're doing pretty good. I think, I think we are. I think yep. we are. And you yep. know, the, the things like <clears throat> last week's show, Brad, Brad got in touch with us because he heard our show with Dr. Del Rey and Dr. Veronica Dress. He said, what a breath of fresh air. And then he's, we, he, he and I started talking. And he was talking what he was going through, and I started researching and looking at some of the fights he was going through and how people were being bashing this guy who was just trying to help his son. Mm-hmm. And I said, Brad, why don't you come on the show and talk about your story? He said, done. It's a done deal. Let's do it. And here he was, and he's talking about his story, and now he's actually thinking he might come on a regular basis on the show. Seriously? Yes. Hello. Yay. I mean, he yeah. might be the newest member of our crew. We don't even know at yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, it's 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 great. It it really has been. It, we've um, it's, it's been a hell of a, a, a trip so far. Yeah, yeah. Despite all the problems that we have, <laughs> well, we have problems, but the, but it's it's a it's a good group effort. You know, it, and it's, it's fun. It's, yeah, it's, it's so fun. fun. That was the point of it, right? To make, yeah. keep it fun. Mm-hmm. So I don't want this to become a chore. I don't want these people to walk in and say, "Oh God, I gotta go do a podcast again." <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So. When I feel like that, I just don't come. <laughs> No, in all I'm joking, in, guys. in all I'm of joking. my generations of various incarnations, this absolutely is, <laughs> <laughs> this absolutely takes the cake, as they say. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Thank you so much, guys, for being, for being with me, and uh, thank you to our audience for <laughs> sticking with us through thick and thin, <laughs> and a lot of thin. <laughs> yeah, all this time. Well. Okay. Thank you for having us, Kevin. Oh, dear. Because we wouldn't be I, here without you. Well, I wouldn't be here without you, too. So, I mean, if I had to do this podcast by myself, it'd be a really dull show. It wouldn't really be. Yeah, it I would. Think, I think the chemical... <laughs> <laughs> You're making me coffee. <laughs> no, it's the chemistry that we have in between each other like that is what makes the show. There's a lot of podcasts, what they do is they'll do via Skype, but are at all different locations, and they all send each other the, the audio, and then they mix it together to make it a show. Um, that's great, but you don't develop the same kind of chemistry that we have here. We bounce off each other like that, which is because we're all in the same room. At the, we at the we can time. throw things at people when they fall asleep. That's, that's right. <laughs> you wouldn't be talking about somebody who uh, sh- who won't be named here, would you? <laughs> yes. A specific someone. He's not here to defend himself, guys. Come on. He's not feeling good today. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our usual stuff. Ah, uh, okay, in the news. Guys, did you hear there's a right-winger activist in Langley, right next door? Uh, uh, she's a, her name is Lauren Southern. She was actually stopped from entering the UK on March 12th. Seriously? The, the reason was given, her presence is not conducive to the public good. Hmm. How did they determine that? Well, apparently, uh, the authorities asked her if she was a, uh, a Christian extremist. And the authorities have a problem with right-wing terrorism that's happening in the UK. Yeah, totally. She has a history of right-wing extremism. Uh, she was detained by t- the Italian Coast Guard in May of 2017 for trying to uh, block a ship that was rescuing stranded refugees. What? Yes. Mm. And she was also a writer for the Rebel. And this woman is right here in Langley. Wait, uh, she, did, was there anything in the article that said why she wanted to go to the UK? Was she there to give a speech that might have been incendiary? It didn't specify, but I would yeah. I would assume that's the case. Yeah. So it, it's kind of an interesting thing that, you know, of course, she, she's, she's going to claim persecution, right? Of course, right away. But it's interesting to see that the world is starting to say, oh, you know what? You're right-wing bullshit here? No, we don't need it. We really don't need it. So she couldn't get why it. Why was she trying to stop a boat from saving people? <sighs> Like seriously, lady? It didn't specify, but I will. I will. I will assume here that it's a, you know, uh, when it comes to right wing extremism, they have a big thing against immigration, Hi. right? So, like these people are literally fleeing for their lives. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, like, and don't course, be an asshole. Yeah, I mean, it's a, for for a country. <clears throat> excuse me for for a country that um, thrives on free speech, which the UK does. It's it's a difficult line many times, you know, between allowing somebody to come in and express their views, whether they're Mm -hmm. political or religious or social, whatever it is, and determining, no, as much as we value free speech, this person crosses the line and is a danger, 
you know, while they're while they're in the country, and they've had enough difficulty to where they they have to, you know, take a good hard look at who who's in their country at any given time. Should we try to contact this woman? Mm. Should we try to bring her on the show and sure. see? Oh my God, <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's she research. would hate us, I think. Well, no, let's let's we could research a little bit yeah, about we'll her an and her. see, you know, um, what 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 the what the story is. Yeah, because it it, it wouldn't turn it would turn into a very political show really quick, right? Obviously, and oh. her being a Christian extremist, accepting a, a, an atheist invitation on a podcast. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll see. We'll see. What, <laughs> yeah. We'll take a look. We'll see what happens. Maybe maybe the audience would be very interested in hearing about that. <laughs> Okay, Nancy, you love this. Uh, did you hear about that Joe Biden tweet? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, this is so he, funny. Yeah, I think he said that last year sometime, but it didn't get nearly the publicity that it did this time. Well, I don't have the tweet exactly, but he said something to the effect that he would beat up Donald Trump if he was back in high school, <laughs> take him behind the take him behind the barn, the and, barn, and, and just and, and beat the him crap up. out of him. Well, Trump, being Trump. <laughs> Said that Biden was weak physically and mentally, and he would be he would go down so fast. Isn't it great? Crying to see that? all the way, he isn't would it, go down crying. Yeah, isn't it great yeah. to see two seventy year old plus men <laughs> reacting <laughs> like school bullies? Is, is, this is the level of politics we have today. This is so classy. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's there's some perverse sense of humor in in my brain that says yeah let them both strip down to their underwear oh, put them in the that would put them be in the a ring. fight of the decade that <laughs> would be in a, a ring i would and buy I, courtside seats for that and i would put my money on biden just that, oh, of course <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> that would be true oh I, that would be uh, an absolutely no, donald amazing. trump could probably do like sumo wrestle style because he's large enough <laughs> Just like kind of like well, he he can, he can swing a chair. He wasn't a WWE there for a while. Very so true. So he can fold a chair. <laughs> okay, something more intellectual here. Did you guys hear that NASA got a signal from Voyager One? I read that. Thirteen billion miles away, they fired up the, th- the thrusters after th- they've been s- uh, the thrusters haven't been fired uh, for thirty seven years, <gasps> and they fired up the thrusters and it worked. Wow, uh, the, that's amazing! Right now, Voyager One is traveling at thirty-five thousand miles per hour, <laughs> and travels about nine hundred thousand miles per day away from us, and then uh, it crosses into inner space. But what I mean by inner space is is actually outside the solar system at this point, is in between stars, uh, and it crossed in twenty twelve. It took nineteen hours for the signal to arrive. It's amazing to see that that little craft wow. is still. Buzzing and still sending us signals. It's wild. I read that um, the the signals were geared to the technology. When was it? Nineteen eighty three. When I can't, I can't think of oh, when it was. Wasn't in the seventies. Seventy. Okay. Well, anyway. the, the technology was so old that there was nothing like it available, and yes. they had to go back into the archives <laughs> and find out, you know, what exactly they used and the coding, and you know what a you know what a labor of love that. It was you wow. know to go back and 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 find what it was was that was going to fire him up, and then it worked. And then it worked <laughs> after sitting there for thirty seven years. It worked. I, I can't know. believe that. I mean, they used to build things to last back then. Obviously, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely did. Oh my god, what, what an amazing, amazing thing! Yeah, it's a good thing they didn't toss out any of those old um, codes or yeah. whatever it was that they had to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in some countries, they have statues of generals and politicians. Yeah. But uh, in Japan, they have a statue of Godzilla. Yes! Oh. <laughs> this makes me so happy. <laughs> and um, they built a statue of Godzilla in Tokyo's Hibiya, which is uh, where, where uh, the Toho Studios were actually uh, used to be located. Uh, the statue is apparently uh, 9.84 feet tall. And uh, it's just a tribute to hmm. the most famous king of the monsters, That's right? Awesome. That's right. Yeah, Godzilla, yeah. of course, first started Did, to appear in 1954. Have you guys watched any of those old Godzilla movies? Yes. The original? No. I love it. I love it. Oh. You, know, you haven't? No. Oh. It's fantastic stuff. I've, I've, only, I've only seen that. I think it was like in the 90s. They're yeah. the, wonderful. The, the, yeah. The one yeah, where it had There's eggs. Godzilla and then there's Mothra. <laughs> yeah. Godzilla and Mothra. Right now, they're, 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 they're filming Godzilla versus King Kong. Yeah. yeah. That's going to happen very soon. Uh, there was a period of time of, uh, in the Godzilla movies. They were 
you know, really tongue in cheek and kind of yeah. stupid. I think it was like in the 60s, 70s. But the original Godzilla in 1954 is still touted as one of the best uh, Godzillas it ever. Turns, it turns up every every now and then, just depending on, uh, you know, what shows. I think sometimes they show up on, um, oh, I'll think of it, but there's Sven Gulli. Yes. That's one of the the uh, old uh, um, movie. Yes. I guess they have all the universal movies, but they also have some of the Japanese There's something ones. very interesting about those. Uh, the, this original Godzilla in 1954. If you watch the Japanese version, it's actually much deeper in thought and be, how the Japanese felt because this is only uh, 10 somewhat 10 years after uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki mm-hmm. right so that's the whole uh, origin story of Godzilla right? the whole nuclear nation coming back at you and stuff like that um, but when the Americans took their version of Godzilla they added a couple of American actors and you can see the racism because in the American actors it's almost like you know they're, they're carrying the show in the American version but in Japanese the original version the people are actually much more deep than what they have in the American version. You can actually see the mm-hmm. racism of the time in it if you compare film by film, side by side. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, speaking of nature, scientists in Colombia have issued reports to the UN uh, to see how plants and animals are doing per continent. And the results are not very good. Um, they say uh, they predict that by 2050, the Americas will have 15% less less plants and animals right now no fish stocks in Asia by 2048 the fish are going to be gone according to this report in Asia by 2048 that's a huge problem Mm -hmm. a quarter of the species are threatened in Europe and Africa could lose 50% of birds and mammals by 2100 wow yeah, and this happens just, of course, as we just had the death this week of the last white male oh, I rhino. I saw that. I, so I saw that. Um, I saw that they do have some um, some sperm, yeah. f- frozen sperm, and they're going to try to use it with some of the other subspecies, but it's not going to be. It's the, not going to be the white rhino. Yes, yeah, because some only, of it's going to be. Um, um, the only two surviving members are, are his daughter and his granddaughter. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, it's good that the DNA is still going to go on, but when you think it's a tragedy to add an animal a, like a any animal, majestic to animal that. too. It's not. It's, it's, yeah. A white rhino is a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a tank. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay, and of course we got to talk last, but uh, certainly not least, about the, did you hear about the hostage taken in France? Yeah. Yeah, the guy a guy carjacked a car. He started shooting at the police. He killed three people before being shot and killed himself. He claims he was a soldier of the Islamic State. Well, there we go. Uh. There we go. His name is Ridouan Latdim, 25 years old. He took refuge in a supermarket with the hostages. Now, one of the cops who was wounded apparently exchanged himself uh, against some of the hostages. You know, so he offered himself as a, uh, as a hostage. Um, but he opened his phone, his cell phone. And he kept it on himself, so the police could actually hear the conversations, what was going on. He, he did something very smart there. Um, Lakdim actually asked for the release of uh, Salah Abdeslam, who apparently was one of the sole survivors of the uh, November 2015 attack on Paris that killed 130 people. Oh. So, but, you know what? Boom. They took him down, they shot him, he's dead. Huh. So, oh well. And that police officer was one of the people that died? Uh, no, one of the... Uh, oh, was it... No, the police officer was wounded, but I don't oh, think I he thought... was... The, he killed three people, but uh, that was during the carjacking. He shot oh, a person and, okay. and by, by the, uh, taking their car and stuff like I that. I thought I had heard that he had died. Oh, I don't know. Did he? I didn't, I didn't see that in the article. When did you look at it? I looked at it yesterday. So. I, it was this morning, I think. Oh, okay. I no, saw that that's died. a shame. That's the case. Well, another moron religious moment. Okay, Nancy, you got a top ten for us, I'm assuming? I do, oh, as right. a matter of fact. Uh, remember last week we did the um, the best ten cars that you can buy? Yeah. So this week, let's do the reverse. These cars are generally listed as avoid like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> top ten lemons. Top ten lemons. Well, actually... <laughs> I, I, when I started to research the the um, the worst cars, they seem to fall in two different categories. So it'll take a little bit. It'll take a little bit more time, not that much more time. But when I looked at the list, there seemed to be the the two lists. One list was the worst used cars that were 
somewhere in the early 2000s, you know, the really older ones that, that you wanted to buy. And then the other list is are the more recent cars, somewhere, you know, between 2011 and now that you want to avoid Ooh. like the plague. So we've got two two different categories, two different price points, depending on what your budget is. Do not buy these cars. Warning. Warning, warning. Now, we do, there may be some discussion because maybe one of us has one of these cars at this point. <laughs> You're looking at me again. But here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to change my seat so that I'm sitting maybe across from Kirsten one day <laughs> and Christina the other, so so you don't feel picked on. <laughs> it's the seating. It's part of the show. You Pick put up me here, you show. masochist. We're, just, we're all kind of angled towards you, except the couch. Well, there yeah. we go. Okay, so here we go. Here are the worst older cars that that you can avoid: a BMW 33. Really? Zero, yeah. At, at the 06, 07 through 09. Is that a three? That, well, yeah. I mean, those are the model numbers, but they're all BMWs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. You like them? No, but BMWs is usually the, the, the reputation of BMWs is being a very yeah, high quality it's product. On, it's on a lot of yeah. lists. It's I guess, I guess everyone's going to have a low point sometime. Sometime, yeah, I, so, I yeah. guess. The Buick Enclave, mm-hmm. and that was through, through 08 to 011. And. The Chevy Cruze. Anybody ever have a nope. Chevy Cruze? No. <laughs> and the Uplander and the Venture in the in the Chevy. Avoid those. And Chrysler PT Cruiser. Oh God, yes, you had one. But of those. I had one. You had one. Of I those. had That's one. Right. I did, and I had it because of the cargo space. But it was terrible on gas, and you know, it, uh, the radiator and here and there. I remember but, when you had that little car. Yeah, but it was other than the it guzzled gas like crazy. Uh, Dodge Grand Caravan. <laughs> um, Ford F two fifty and three fifty diesel from five to oh mm-hmm. eight, and a Fiesta I had one of those too, but avoid those at this point. Jeep Wrangler, uh, I want one so bad. Oh, I had a Wrangler. I want a two door though. You want a two yes, door? Yes, I had two door. I had one of those last year. Yeah, despite the, the did you have is, a lot of repair what, work? Well, you, no, it was brand new. Only oh. get it if you're gonna use it for cross country, like like yeah. back. Backcountry. If, if, if you, if you, you get yourself a Wrangler, uh, whatever top, you do have to realize that the one thing about Jeeps, they leak. Eventually, oh. the rain will seep in because they're, <laughs> because especially if you're going four by four, right? I mean, eventually yeah. the seal kind of breaks over yeah. the roof. If we're going four by four, and we're planning on getting dirty anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one that may be controversial, and that's a Mini Cooper. From, oh, really? from, from yeah, or five to twelve, I, I I haven't heard anybody have any trouble with them. But I love yeah. You don't see them a lot though. The Saturn Outlook, yeah, they're you know kind of fading away, and the Volkswagen GTI and the Tiguan. Really? Yeah. Wow. And these are, I mean, some of them are controversial. Anyway, those are the older ones. Here are the newer ones to avoid: Ford Explorer. Um, the two 2011 Audi A4, the 2016 Infiniti O50, really? yeah, the 2016 Cadillac ATS, the 2016 Chevy Camaro, the 2017 Ford Mustang. What? Yeah, <laughs> the 2016 Dodge Challenger. The what? Two, yes. I love those cars. <laughs> I know. So far, we're going to have to go back to having a trike or a bicycle, right? <laughs> well, like, what, what's the car. issue with these cars? Are they the bad mechan- on? Mostly mechan- oh, okay. the mechanical. The Challenger, mechanical, the Mustang, lot- the Camaro? Yeah. Those are classic muscle yeah. cars. Oh. But I know. it's the particular years, is it not? Yeah, particular years. 2017, the brand new. Yeah, the 17 is not as good as the older ones. Wow. The, the 2013 Ford Expedition. A lot of Fords on here that maybe they're maybe the parts are are not you know doing um, as well. Yeah, the two thousand and seven Audi Q seven. That's supposed to be a real lemon, and the two thousand twelve Volkswagen Touareg. Can I just so, say that car names have super improved? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, yeah. these car names are awesome. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, but it's always good to look the car, and then if you decide it's worth the risk, you know, maybe it's not the plague, maybe it's just a short-term flu. Was it according know? to Consumer Reports there? Or? Well, these are from different these are from different lists. There okay. are the Consumer Reports is the one that you everybody relies on the yeah, most, yeah. but there are also other uh, other lists out there that overlap. Yeah, Consumer Report is really, really good for that. Uh, yeah. When you, when you come out of the car. Uh, Edwards, I think, is it Edwards that also comes out with, I don't with know. a list? I think Edwards I don't comes know. out with a list. And um, is it Motorsport that comes out? There, there are several of them that, that come out that are, are pretty reliable. And then when you read what the problems are, um, you can you can judge for yourself. Anyway, it's mm-hmm. a very personal mm-hmm. decision. Everybody I, happy I with the cars I they have now? I definitely think that that's an issue with buying like a brand new car is that you can't look at like the long term reviews and like, hey, does well, this car yeah. have I, issues? Especially when it's a new model that it's something brand new yeah, on totally, the market. Totally. You almost have to the, the old wisdom nugget was you know don't do that because you gotta yeah, wait, wait a year to wait for them to work out the bugs right. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Nancy, for another interesting top ten. Oh yeah, about cars. It's it's fun. It's a mm-hmm. it's a fun topic. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. All right, Kirsten, what are we doing? Another brilliant moment brought to you by religion. No, you gotta have a, right. you gotta have a break in it, Kirsten. You gotta have a break. Doesn't matter. Let her express herself. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Okay, the violence here. Come on, girls. <laughs> All right. Here's a story. A, for- a, ba- a bad story, unfortunately. A Florida teenager who had previously been investigated for alleged violent tendencies watched jihadist videos and read the Quran. Guess what happened? Yeah. He was shot? Well, that was to give him courage before he started <laughs> stabbing a 13-year-old boy to death oh. and seriously injuring two others at a birthday sleepover. What? Oh, my gosh. Corey Johnson, 17, was charged with first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder after police said he confessed to the assault at the 13th birthday sleepover party at a Balinese country club home, the Palm Beach Post reported. Uh, Jupiter Police, Palm Beach County School District Police, and the FBI previously received intelligence gathering on Johnson that prompted an investigation into his alleged violent tendencies. Johnson reportedly told police he woke up at 4 a.m. on Monday at Cal Bancroft's home and had an urge to kill Cal's mother, Elaine Simmons. Cal's brother, 13-year-old Dane uh, Bancroft, and Dane's friend, 13-year-old jo- Giovanni Sierra. The three victims were each asleep at the time. Wait, so so he stabbed his brother? No, no, he's, it's not even his brother. Or it was his brother's friend? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a friend. He, he was at a birthday party. Oh, that's that's really. Wow. They were having a sleepover. He decided to wake up at four o'clock in the morning because he decided, oh. you know, he needed to kill people. Wow. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that's like someone being radicalized. I think that's just someone who's crazy. Yeah. Well, in his yeah. statement, Johnson advised he stabbed the victims because of his Muslim faith. Well, there we go. Oh, I think there's more. To yeah, it I think than he's just like, that's there. like yeah. underlying yeah. psychosis. Yes, <laughs> could, be. could very well be. I yes, thank you, Doctor Christine. I agree. You and I concur. <laughs> I concur. I concur. And our, and our medical diagnosis, our psychiatric. Yes. Uh, but this is exactly what we always say about religion. It's not necessarily the religion will tell you that will necessarily make you kill somebody, but if you're already a bit it gives of a you wacko, a reason it gives you permission. Yeah. Exactly, it gives you a reason to do it, right? And that's very sad. We're a normal society. We'd be like, let's not murder people. Religion's like, well, you shouldn't murder people unless they're these people. <laughs> yeah. So let's do something a bit lighter then. Um, there's a proposed. Ugh, it's great that I have three ladies here with me today because <laughs> there's a proposed new law in Texas that would require men who want Viagra to be subject to a rectal exam <laughs> and would punish male masturbation with a hundred dollar fine. What? Yes. Okay, that's ridiculous. Well, hold on. It, it is. Let me let me explain to you. This is House Bill 42, uh, 4260, called the Man's Right to No Act. It was filed late last week by Democratic Texas legislator represented, uh, Representative Jessica Farrar. This is a joke bill. Oh. Uh, she's 
she's doing this. Yeah. She's okay. doing this because Texas has a tendency to do this to women. A women, yeah, totally. So she decided, okay, let's do this to okay. men and see how I, stupid this I is. I can totally get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> the bill calls masturbatory emissions an act against an unborn child and failing to preserve the sanctity of life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the bill also contains provision that would put restrictions on vasectomies, Viagra prescriptions, and colonoscopies, including. A, the state must create an informational booklet called A Man's Right to Know that contains information and illustrations on the benefit and concern about those who, uh, those three treatments. A man m- must review the booklet before going through with any of them, which is exactly what they've done to women yeah. before they decide to have an yeah. abortion. Totally. Like yeah. A man will receive an, a rectal exam and an MRI of his rectum before any of these three treatments. A man would not be able to sue a doctor for refusing to provide these treatment or another procedure if the procedure violates a doctor's personal moralistic or religious beliefs. <laughs> a doctor must obtain consent from the man before providing the treatment um, before providing the treatment and the man may give it only if he waits at least 24 hours after oh, the doctor visits. Beautiful. Yeah. The state must establish a registry of non-profit organization and hospital that provide abstinence, counseling, and supervising physicians for masturbatory emissions and semen storage. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if any of the Republican legislators in Austin got the joke or they thought, but these women are crazy. Yeah. They must have thought. Anyway, yeah, so are you guys. <laughs> we we our fingers are crossed that with the midterms, <laughs> you know, a lot of those guys are going to be out. And what's her name? Uh, Jessica. Where is it? Uh, Jessica. Jessica. Where is it? Let's hope she gets to be speaker. Jessica of that. Farrar. Yeah. Let's hope she runs and gets speaker yeah. of the house after so, the midterms. So it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh And yeah. it, it just shows how ridiculous this is. And why is it so accepted for women and men? It's like it's not. It's brilliant. Great, yeah. great yeah. move, Jessica. Great move. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least. Billy Graham. Oh. Again? Evangelist Billy Graham's daughter, uh-huh. Anna Graham Lotz, said God will punish America's immorality with a nuclear strike. Oh, okay. The okay. family tradition guys, continues. This is even more terrifying with the person Trump just put in as his like national security advisor. Yeah. Like, don't joke about this, guys. <laughs> Like, ah! Uh. In keeping with her brother's theme that the nuclear state has a, quote, sin problem, uh, Reverend Franklin Graham's sister, Anne Graham Lotz, told Decision Magazine that God will send a nuclear strike to punish the country's immorality. What a family. So is she wanting everyone to die? No, this is, this is, okay, this is a very akin to, let's say, for example, I was a fortune teller. Yeah. And I went to you and I said, you're in trouble, you're in danger, unless you take precaution. What did I just tell you here? If something <laughs> bad happens to you, you're going to say, well, Kevin warned me. Yeah. If something doesn't happen to you, you say, well, I took precaution. It's a win-win totally. situation for her. Oh, and, and, and exactly if you do take need. precaution, I, and it still happens to why I didn't take enough precaution. Exactly. You know, I, I know nothing. I mean, I'm going to talk when I know nothing, which I generally do. But uh, his kid, Billy Graham's kids, Franklin, and then his, his daughter, who, who felt for quite a while that she should have been the head of the organization but uh, Billy Graham didn't think a woman could handle it even though his daughter was smarter than Franklin mm-hmm. and, and so forth but I, I really wonder whether or not Billy Graham would think that that the his two kids are are more extreme than he ever would have been. They, it really seems as though they they have taken you know their their father's message and politicized it Cranked to a notch. degree that he may not ever have, yeah, have done. Yeah, exactly. Well, he got the ball rolling, and they're just running with it now. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lot says she believes a severe judgment is coming and has partly begun, which is another way of saying. You yeah, know, it nothing. began like. 2,000 years ago? When, yeah, apparently. Like, the people have been saying this for literally as long as this religion has been here. Like, literally. <laughs> Quote, And I'm talking about something like a nuclear strike, an earthquake that splits us in two, an EMP, <laughs> electromagnetic pulse, <laughs> attack that devastates our electrical grid. In other words, the next natural so disaster she's going to say, see? Does she oh. not understand how earthquakes work? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I'm like, um, the middle of America is not a fault line. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> America can't be split in half. 
Uh, so something that major that would be a game changer for America because we are so defiant and rebellious and idolatrous and immoral and we know better. Law says that Americans deserve to be zapped to death because of their immor- immorality and she's also a, tr- a strong supporter of Trump. Of course she is. Who is I, I, I missed who you were talking about. That's Anne Graham Law. Oh, oh, that's her. Okay, yeah. 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 What, what a family. I, I mean, thought you had switched. No, no, yeah. That's because I used the word lot. Yeah. Oh, that's her man. married it's, name, it's, I guess. It's really crazy when you think that, like, do these people actually think that, like, hope and think that, like, there's going to be a, like, God's going to punish us all and, like, the world's going to go to hell? The, these guys are, well, they're peddlers of hate, first of all, and uh, the, but they're also, you, since you can't predict something like that, they just they just wildly make accusations like that. An earthquake, a nuclear a no, no, strike. Not, not just an earthquake. I mean, it could an happen earthquake anywhere. Splits America in half. This is a bit like this is a bit like. Remember that woman that was, was trying to swoosh away a, a storm? Oh my gosh, that was stick? amazing. That was so amazing. That you, was. This is what people do, right? That was amazing. They just they just throw something out there on the wall and hopes it sticks. And if it sticks, they go, "See, told you." Yeah. <laughs> this is this is religion one hundred and one. And people are foolish enough to fall for this. Mm. All right. Well, it keeps them in power. For some reason, it keeps, they, they feel so it keeps them in, in power. The, the more fear that you, um, this, that you spark in people, the greater control you can, exactly. you can have if they're low information. Uh, it's just a low information congregation. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you so much, ladies. So let's go to commercial. And when we come back, we'll be with Robert Stanley of the Right to Reason podcast. So stay with us. If your skepticism is socially conscious and doesn't take itself too seriously, you might like life, the universe, and everything else. Great comfort, his big stumper was literally, which came first, the chicken or the egg? A lot of the interviews took place in front of a building that said liberal arts. (laughs) (laughs) I'm guessing that they're not all science majors. Life, the universe, and everything else. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and pretty much anywhere else. I don't know, Zoom? Is that still a thing? In a world torn apart by a lack of reason. Or And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. And I claim that right. In the morning. Hi, everybody. This is Robert Stanley from the Right to Reason podcast. And if you subscribe now, you'll get free. Learn more about the broadcast at the right to reason.com. Anti Semitism was preached as an official doctrine of the church until 1964. Do you think that might have something to do with public opinion in Austria and Bavaria and Poland and Lithuania? That the, the Jewish people were accused collectively as a people of deicide, of the crime of the murder of God in the figure of Jesus of Nazareth. And that, that anathema on them was not lifted until 64, well after the uh, perpetrators of the Holocaust had stood trial in secular courts and been rightly punished for their actions. How can this church say it has any moral superiority? It has difficulty catching up to what ordinary people regard as common moral and ethical sense. And it still can't make itself apologize properly. So joining us live on the line is Robert Stanley for a live recording without any pants on. (laughs) He is the host. (laughs) Of the Right to Reason podcast, he's a snappy dresser and a snazzy dancer. Robert, thank you so much for joining us at Left of the Valley. Hey, happy to be here. I'm, I'm really, um, I'm a little nervous. I, I had messed up my scheduling and I thought I was going on a cooking show today. <laughs> so I, got, I got like 17 fucking jokes about asparagus loaded up. I have nothing for atheism. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna hey, to wing should, it. You should still really try to sneak Kevin. them in. <laughs> He'll totally sneak them in. <laughs> Robert, I've, I, uh, I've become a I'm big... The, I'm just going gonna, gonna to try to work in vegetable jokes as we go. I don't know how that's oh going to apply, but I'll make, I'll make it work. I'll do my best. Yeah, and a, and a couple of slow cooker jokes because you don't, you know, we, we very seldom hear any slow cooker joke so i hope you've got yeah. some on your list asparagus slow cooker you're on a roll we're ready Broccoli for you can be funny 
Okay, <laughs> you can. Robert, I've become a big fan of your show, the Right to Reason podcast, and you're coming up on, the, on your one year anniversary. But for an audience that might not know you, would you be so kind to maybe give us a bio of who Robert Stanley is? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining us, Robert. That was great. <laughs> that's fantastic radio. And that's my story. Uh, but no, so, okay. I, I Dad was a preacher. Brother became preacher. A bunch of, bunch of people in the ministry in my family. I ended up going to Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, to become a preacher, go to seminary. And um, I'm a young guy, and, and I, I'm very passionate about, about Jesus and, and uh, very much within the fundamentalist movement. You know what I mean? And... I, I really, I, I was really in it, right? I was really, I was really invested, it was heart, mind, soul, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I remember I started having some doubts. I started reading Job a little bit. Remember that you know Book of Job, like it, God just kind of fucks him over with Satan's <laughs> helps. Yeah, and, and uh, like, <laughs> and he, yeah, and like, and Job's like, oh, this sucks, man. And God shows up, like, who the fuck are you to say it sucks? And it, it's just like reading the whole thing really bothered me. And and it's it's the typical atheist that kind of comes out of fundamentalist story, where it's mm-hmm. like the more you read the Bible, the more atheist you become. And you know, everybody's like, well, maybe you wouldn't be an atheist if you study more. Like, no, studying made me an atheist. God damn it! <laughs> and so. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was really struggling, and I remember sitting there in my dorm, and like they they have strict dorm rules there, like it's like a it's like a prison camp for Jesus. I mean, they actually they would do white glove inspections where you stand outside your door, hands at your side, you and the rest of your dorm mates, and they go in and they have a literal fucking white glove that they would rub to check for dust. So I mean, what? a very strict environment. Yeah, if, you're, if your tie is not double Windsor, fuck you. I would so die. Anyway. Is yeah. that like cleanliness is next to godliness in action? Yeah. Oh, very, yes. Very, very much so, Nancy. So oh. anyway, so um, I'm, 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 I remember getting down on my knees in the middle of the dorm room. Nobody else is around. And just, I mean, just weeping because it, it hit me. I don't think I've ever heard you, Lord. You know, like I... Mm. I've been talking to you. You haven't been talking to me. And and the silence was deafening in that moment. I said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do with my life? What, what, what should I do? And it was really, it was really difficult because I got nothing back. Fucking nothing. And, you know, it was just, it was just, it was like radio dead air. Well, first of all, I must say, I, I'm, I'm relieved because when you said white glove, I thought you were talking about some kind of rectal exam. <laughs> I'm really relieved of that. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of that. I mean, they're not, I'm not sure what kind of school you went to there, but <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was years after that I, I, I ended up trying to get out of that whole mess because I, I got nothing back, and I moved to Texas, and then I eventually uh, um, had had my firstborn kid. And right around the time she gets five years old, that's kind of that age of you know reason, right, where yeah. they can they Start can decipher questions. between heaven and hell or whatever. And um, it kind of hit me like, what kind of God would send this little kid to hell? Yeah. And that's really when it, it, I mean, really that moment, you know, and that silent moment came back. Very, very dramatic moment for me because I remember hyperventilating. A lot of people are like, you know, when did you become an atheist? It's like, well, it wasn't just one time, right? I mean, well, this, that was my one time if there was ever one mm. when it just hit me. And uh, I, ha- I had a panic attack. I remember just holding the, I had like this little workbench in my garage and just holding on to it with my left hand and just kind of the other hand was on my chest and just, I just thought like, holy shit, God's an asshole. <laughs> you know? And um, yeah, it wasn't long after that. I, I thought, you know, this, this silence is bullshit, man. The, 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 the silence that I've been hearing my whole life, it's not going to happen anymore. I'm not going to be silent. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, so I, I thought maybe I should just I should start a podcast, start talking about it. So we we have uh, we have folks like you on, uh, um, folks like yourselves. I mean, and then uh, we do debates. Uh, but you know, it's not just religious. We we try to get into politics and and philosophy and psychology and and just try to have fun, get, get a full mm-hmm. spectrum of things. Kind of, kind of like your show does. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic show. I highly, highly recommend it to everybody who's, who hasn't heard you. Uh, I, I finally, I've become a fan real, real fast. I mean, as soon as I heard you and that fantastic voice of yours, like, ah, oh, that's it, I'm hooked. 
This guy's my man right there. <laughs> well, did you do professional radio before you did the podcast, or when you started the podcast, that was that was your way of getting into into radio work? No, I never I never played with it before. I um, I will say the way I started the podcast was super fucking stoned. <laughs> Had, That's the best way to start <laughs> everything. And like I'm not I'm not like a big weed guy. My wife, she 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 loves smoking. She smokes every day. I'm just you know it's just not it's not for me every once in a while just to rehabilitate the cannabinoid receptors maybe once a month or something. But anyway, so but but I was so nervous. I'm like I got to calm down. And I got R and Rock coming on for my first episode. I, oh, I, oh wow! For so your first yeah, episode. Any <laughs> find find that in uh, uh, Left at the Valley's archives. That was a great talk. But anyway, so I I I about to talk to this, you know my hero, one of my heroes. Uh-huh. At least, right? So I got super high, and like the <laughs> whole conversation, I'm just like, whoa, you know, like Neo, and uh, yeah, it was a good talk though. Somehow it got into drugs. I don't know how that <laughs> happened. I wonder. Arn, Arn is one of a kind. We love having him on the show. We had him in person here as well. He's a fantastic, fantastic fella. Yeah, yeah. And now you're coming over your one year anniversary. Yeah, and I'm not the only one. You guys are at four. Yeah, well, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've been limping along Obviously, for four years. Uh, <laughs> I was joking about thinking I was going on some talk cooking show. Cooking <laughs> talk show. We, the wife and I listen to you guys all the time. So, oh, I oh. we've actually had sex to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 I'm not lying. I wish I was. <laughs> it's, 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 it's heaven. That's and a first. I, feel like, I was gonna say. I feel like that's a first. Uh, yeah, I first. Just, you know, I'm really. <laughs> I don't know. It may be a little. To our sultry show, voices. We will. We will never think of our audience in the same way again. <laughs> in post production, I'm gonna have to add some Barry White to this that's conversation right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard the uh, the we are atheists, atheists, yes. the, the rap song that you followed up at the end, I, I knew I had to wrap it up. So. <laughs> Uh, Robert, in your in your one year uh, in 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 the community of podcasting and all that, uh, you've probably you've interviewed a lot of different types of people, and you said you've gone into not just atheism but also other subjects like politics and stuff like that. Uh, do you feel that maybe that's one of the reasons why your show has become so successful? It's not just an atheist program. Oof, that is a, I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't expecting some good questions. <laughs> For that answer, man. <laughs> is that is that the re- because it's a broad? I don't. You know, I can't. Okay. Well, we can okay. only talk I about wanna, atheism for so much. With, no, it's the guests. The guests make us special. It's not. Yeah, but that's that's my first impression. I don't know, man. That's that's a weird one. Is it because we're a broad category? You know what I think it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's because. Lots of times, it, it kind of is like that that initial response I wanted to give that it's about the guest. But here's the, here's what I think it is. Okay, I'm a goofball, and yep. <laughs> I get to have smart people on, and I think the dynamic between like some science guy, you know, saying something like, "Well, you know, black holes are really just dead stars if you think about it. They're not empty voids of space, and you know, the cosmos. It's actually just a dead star." And then I'm like. Well, that's crazy, and then wah, wah, sound effect. You know, like I think that dynamic might might have something to do with it. Maybe just like a, having a smart person on while I'm a jackass with a with a cold beer. So that might be it. God, I love this. But guy. I don't know. That's a hard question. <laughs> you hit you hit me. That that was a sidewinder. I don't know. How are, you, are you kidding, Robert? This is one of the best answers I've had in this show yet today. After four years, are you kidding me? This is it's, awesome. It's because you you can tell it's legit as fuck. That's right. Like, that's right. There was no ego in that answer at all. It was a very good statistical question. People people relate to you exactly. People relate to Maybe. you. That's fantastic. The dumb people. <laughs> dumb people go to www.righttoreason.com. And you can feel welcome to be stupid. <laughs> Come on, Sir Robert, and I'm necessarily knows of Left of the Valley subsidiaries. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Robert, uh, you've you've been an atheist for several years now, although you've been doing only the podcast for one year. Have you seen a lot of changes in, quote-unquote, the movement as it's been going on throughout the years? Especially yeah. in your position in the States, especially maybe in the political climate you guys are facing right now as well. Yeah, you know, you, you would think with the whole Trump thing that the atheists would have gotten louder. Mm-hmm. But all that all that it's done is kind of shown that we've got a I hate to do this because you guys are so you guys your whole show is very uniting. And that's what I love about your show is 
that that no matter who you're interviewing or who you're bringing on, what what kind of side of the climate they're on, you know, that you focus on what we agree about. And I think that's really special. And I really I, I want people to support that. I love I love the show. But I my answer is kind of kind of divisive in a way. And I hate to do that. Damn it. I wasn't going to do that. But but yeah, it, it, what what is what is presented is some some kind of dark shadowy side of the the atheist movement and we thought that atheism was synonymous with humanism. Mm. And I think that what we're finding out is that's not atheist, true. It just means you don't believe in God. <laughs> yeah. And and we're not all we're not all supporting feminism. We're not all supporting uh, uh the gay and trans community. We're not all supporting equal rights in the same way and we got some house cleaning. We got some cleanup to do, but but we can do it. We got this far, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I, I think I think you I think you're doing very well on, on your show and something like that. And and to put a point to what you were saying about our show, uh, we got guests that come on our show, and we might not necessarily agree with their politics. For example, remember Nancy when we had the Sasquatch Hunter? I was just that, yeah, you he, and I are. I was just he was that, full blown conservative, the same right? Thing, yeah. Full blown conservatives who doesn't agree with our politics at all. But we weren't talking about that. We were talking about the Sasquatch or Robert Price. Yeah, Robert Price, who's a fantastic Bible scholar, and we had him. Yeah. He was actually our most popular show last year. Uh, but politically, we don't see eye okay. to eye, so we're uh-huh. avoiding the subject. Right, but we're not talking about that. So I, I think I think I think you're you're right on uh, as to uh, how to handle this in the future. Yeah. Yeah, we're just we're we're normally. I mean, the 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 four the four of us or five of us, depending on who's here. We're our, our personalities are not aggressive and challenging. Yeah. We're just not that way. We we envision the show, and I'm saying we, although it's Kevin's show. We really envision the show as being a, a group of of fun people sitting around a table, having a cup of coffee, and just discussing um, one's perspective on on life and science and, and various other things. And it really doesn't occur to us to challenge, you know, and shut that that guest down. We yeah. want to hear if you're, you know, if you've got opposite views, we want to hear those. Bring mm-hmm. them out. And so, and I think it's it's okay to challenge someone on something, yeah. but but to respectfully, yeah, yeah, to yeah. challenge them in a way that you're honestly wanting intellectually to, challenge, yeah. them, not personally. I'm, yeah, I'm going to interrupt here because this is turning out into a fun fest for us. But yeah. we're talking yeah. about Robert's show. <laughs> Well, he's the guest, so we're talking about Robert's show. So, <laughs> so, so, talk about me. so Robert, I'm really interested I'm, I'm with all the different episodes and subject matter that you've covered. Is there anything that, is there any subject matter that you love talking about most? Yeah, any anything philosophy. Yeah? Um, oh. Those are my favorites. I got to talk to um, Ozymandias Ramses II about is reality real and... Do atheists have the burden of proof? And that kind of, like, I love that mm-hmm. stuff. Matt Dillahunty on uh, um, whether or not the Kalam cosmological arguments a, a good argument, you know. And, and yeah. a lot of that stuff, I love that stuff. Uh, the politics, that's passion, right? That's, hey, <laughs> yeah. we got to make some changes. Let's get to it, you know. But the philosophy, that's something kind of like Nancy was saying where you can just sit back with a cup of coffee and just really just listen to each other, mm-hmm. talk to each other, get real about, you know, what the fuck is this reality? I mean, this is a weird reality, yeah. you gotta admit. I mean, if if you were if 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 you if you had never just been born into this and all the culture and all the themes and just everything being the way it is, and you just appeared here out of nowhere, how crazy would this shit be? You know, this would be insane. This is a weird experience, and I think that that's that's what I love about philosophy is it tries to look at it objectively and yeah that's that's my favorite part I like debating too um, you know trying to be respectful to people but just respectful to ideas and, mm-hmm. and the marketplace and just trying to trying to find some kind of common theme like you guys do but at the same time saying hey you know you're a Muslim Quran talks about rape a lot or <laughs> hey you're a Christian the Bible seems to be a assholes to gay people and you know, i just interviewed this guy i haven't released it yet where he was talking about how sodom and gomorrah was actually had nothing to do with homosexuality but that the uh, uh, the, uh a king from a nearby nation had destroyed them and then all of recorded history recorded them as oh they're gay they're bad so god punished them mm. and his whole point was hey look the victor gets to tell the story how yeah. many times have we seen that through history and it blew my freaking mind so i mean stuff like that where you get a new perspective on things that's kind of that's kind of my goal 
No, that's very interesting indeed, and uh, I must commend you for taking on philosophy, because I don't think a lot of us actually do. It's a topic that's very difficult. Myself, I've always seen philosophy as something that... Um, it's great, but not super hu- useful in my mind because I always thought <laughs> philosophy was always great for giving us ideas, but to actually yeah. go and actually meet the idea of reality, that's something else you have to step out of philosophy at that point. You're a science guy. You're I'm more of a science it. guy, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. my passion definitely I, you know, lies in psychology. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, I love psychology. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have any of that science and psychology stuff. Without the philosophers, no. I'm just saying, guys. No, no, right. I, I'm not disagreeing I'm just with saying. you. I'm, just, I'm just disagreeing. With, I'm not disagreeing. We with got you. the ball rolling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ran into the end zone. Do you feel that maybe philosophy has a tendency to maybe rest a bit too much on the laurels today? Is there as much use for philosophy now as it was back then when we didn't understand things? Yeah. So okay, here's here's my take. A great question. So science answers the questions that we can answer. Right. I mean, that, by, by a priori mm-hmm. knowledge, that, that's just a fact. Right. So I mean, if we couldn't answer it, then science couldn't do it because you would have no empirical data. Right. Philosophy tries to answer the questions that we can answer. And there's a hell of a lot more shit that we can answer than can. So I kind of think of philosophy as kind of like, um, I don't know, like like hope in a way where where you, you here here. OK, you look at your checking account right now. You know how much money you have, and you can look at your bills, and you know how much you got to spend. Oh, how depressing you can, that is. You can do the math <laughs> as to whether or not you're fucked at the end of the month, whether you're eating a bologna sandwich or you're going out and taking the family to some kind of fancy Japanese thing, right? But philosophy is that thing that says, okay, I don't have all the facts, but what can I do to get where I want to go? Well, how can I figure out this whole thing? Maybe I need to change my lifestyle maybe i need to do this maybe i need to do that. i don't have all the information but i've got a little bit of hope and and i think that if we if we really work together we'll figure out this goddamn budget you know it's kind of like that, that was a horrible mm-hmm. analogy but it's kind of like that I no I, I think i understand you're, you're essentially saying that science is the car and philosophy is a navigational computer okay your analogy was better you son of a bitch <laughs> I wish I would have thought it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love this guy. <laughs> Why did I go with money? I got bills coming. That's what it was. You can support the Right to Recent podcast at patreon.com forward slash right. There it is. Right. There we go. There we go. Bills covered. And I nailed it. Totally encourage people to do so as well. <laughs> so what's, what's coming up on your, on your show there, uh, Robert? What do you got coming up? Are you you going to stick with the philosophy or are you going to orient your show to uh, uh, onto uh, maybe a different part or are you going to stick it wide, cast a wide net? Uh, so we did a Muslim debate last Sunday. This next Sunday's uh, it's about finance, but we ended up just talking about dicks a lot. It's kind of a goofball episode mm-hmm. with uh, um, uh, Michael Schaefer from the Reasonable Risk podcast, and then after that we got Marissa Licks McCool. I know oh, you guys know her. Yes, yes. we have Marissa. Yes, episode. Um, then I'm debating Eric Lounsbury, who's going up against Dan Barker, Matt Dillahoney. So I'm trying to join the ring with that and. And tell him why he doesn't understand the Bible, and uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And um, then I'm I'm putting Eric, and then another, and then the Muslim that I debated from uh, Amir Aziz from the Huffington Post. He's mm-hmm. he's a great writer, really is. Mm-hmm. But I'm putting those two against each other, and uh, so it's going to be Christian versus Muslim. Nice. And then I'm going to follow up like, all right, so both of you. I shouldn't say this because I don't want to give it away. They're not going to be listening, right? They don't listen probably to anything. Not. No, probably right. not. Here's my plan, okay? It hasn't happened yet. Here's my plan. I'm going to let the Christian and the Muslim debate each other back and forth. Oh, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. You know, Allah or, or, or Muhammad went up to the sky on a white horse, and the other one's like, no, Jesus came back from the dead. And Both ridiculous stuff back and forth for like 30 minutes, right? And then I'm going to be like, okay, now an atheist has some questions. Boom! That's the plan. <laughs> Great idea, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the whole like, uh, uh, look, guys, what should I think? You tell me, all right? I mean, you can't both be right. Exactly. Could exactly. you both be wrong? And you know, like play that whole thing. Like that's that's the goal. So that's I, what's I always we'll found see. it we'll funny when you do that, but with two Christians, and they both give different answers. <laughs> yes. oh, <man. laughs> like a Calvinist and an Armenian, yeah, or some totally. kind of wacky yeah. mix up. Uh, Robert, I got to ask because, you know, up here in Canada, when we look south of the 49 parallel, we can't help but look at some of the politics that's going on. And with the <laughs> current administration, yeah, we yeah, cringe. Uh, do you think Trump's administration is uh, hindering atheism in the States? 
or do you think it's helping? No, it's definitely helping. Oh, really? Definitely. This is yeah. This is totally crippling any religious right claim of saying like we're about family values in the Republican Party. And yeah, no, they're they're fucking up big time. They don't even know it. They're they're doing the same thing. And I'm and I'm I'm a liberal, okay. But I I can at least be objective enough to say they're doing the same thing that the left did with Obama, where they're like, hey, he needs to get the uh, you know congressional not what what wouldn't congressional medal of honor the Nobel Peace Prize for. God's sake. And he's bombing everybody with drones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody on the left wanted to look at what Obama was really up to behind the curtain of a handsome black man. Right. They didn't want to look at it, but he was up to some shit. He was up to some shit the whole time. And and that's what's happening with the religious right right now with Trump. All they have is Jeff Sessions and and he's he's a Keebler elf and he's just (laughs) ridiculous. But his bunny is so cute. No, that's Mike Pence. Oh, sorry. Oh, my that's gosh. Mike <laughs> wow. You're mixing your politicians. Blonde moment. <laughs> it's okay. That's, that's Jeff one Sessions thing that's cool about Canada is you guys know more about American politics than Americans. I know, right? So I'm not going to I'm not gonna criticize that. Uh, I, I do know a lot about American politics. It's kind of yes. scary. The, the, yes, you do. The turtle comma you were referring to was Mitch McConnell. Oh, is that Mitch McConnell? There's so oh, many there of them. <laughs> the turtle. Yeah, the turtle. <laughs> oh, no. Jeff Sessions totally is the elf. Because he has the ears. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> this show's all over the place. I can't believe this. Well, that's, you, that's I, how it usually that goes. that might be my fault more than yours. But... That's okay. It's fun. <laughs> We're having fun with I have I have vegetable jokes if you just want to spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What did the sweet potato say to the pumpkin? Oh, God. I don't know. I am what I am. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I love it. Why are all lesbians vegetarians? Wait, this one might. I don't oh, know. No, this do one it, might be do offensive. It, do it. I don't want to do it. It's okay do if it. you have two bisexual people it. here, so okay. it's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry in advance. Why are all lesbians vegetarians? Because they don't eat meat. <laughs> Hey, it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Two old ladies stopped by a produce stand asking how much are the cucumbers. The farmer said three for a dollar. The first lady looked at the second lady and said, I guess we can eat one of them. <laughs> you think about that for a Half of oh. your listeners like just like looked at each other like, wait, what? <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, God, Robert. <laughs> I really was prepared for a vegan uh, cooking show. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, back to your show. <laughs> um, well, I guess in the wise words of Louis Gohmert, we're not going to cast any dispersions on your asparagus. <laughs> yeah. um, with you having so much content available to talk about, because you do talk, like... Your show isn't just about atheism. What subject are you that you haven't done? Are you most excited to do in the future? Good question. Hmm. I'm full of them. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know what what subject am I most excited mm-hmm. to do. I, I would say, um, or maybe who? What? Which guest would you really, really like to have on if you could? I have been I have been fishing. See how he hasn't mentioned Lawrence us at all. Ever mentioned. since the uh, the craziness, I've, I've been hitting him up a lot, mm-hmm. and I'd, I'd like to just be able to have a real discussion with him. I think right now, what's going on with him? A lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm burning all my Lawrence Krauss books," yeah. and "Oh, you know, we should never listen to him again." And I I think, hold on, is that is that really the way to go here? Mm-hmm. Like, let's let's ask this question, okay? Would um, and, and in case any of the listeners aren't familiar, uh, Lawrence Krauss has had a lot of sexual ac- uh, allegations against him here recently. Um, nothing like rape or, you know, n- n- like not like Donald Trump, Roy Moore, creepy mm. stuff, but definitely some very inappropriate behavior. OK. Mm. And I like to ask, like, would I would I let my daughter go on a date with this guy or would, would I encourage my daughter to go on a date with this guy? Well, no. He sounds like a real creeper. Okay, like we don't have to we don't have to go too far to to figure that out. All right, mm-hmm. but does that have any impact on what he said? I I don't I don't think so because I never I never expected him to be a hero. 
Yeah, right? Exactly. And, and at any point that I wanted uh, him or, or somebody else to be some kind of uh, Puritan-like hero in my mind of the movement, well, that was me fucking up. Because that's that religious shit that I tried to break away from. Of, you know, th- that priest can do no wrong and that kind of thinking. Like, no, 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 no. And, and the same thing that, that we need to be skeptical about in terms of uh, unsubstantiated belief systems, we need to be skeptical about people that we want to call heroes. And he's not hes not a hero, okay? The, guy, the guy's done some real creepy stuff, and we need to acknowledge that. And he's done some real inappropriate stuff, and I feel bad for any victims from that. But at the same time, this is when we need to talk, okay? Yes. Like, like with this whole like censorship kind of kind of thing that's going on. I don't like that. All right, I'm not saying like we need to promote Nazi messages, but do we need to burn down a college because some, you know, random guy like Jordan Peterson from your neck of the woods might want to uh, uh, do a talk at a college? No, I, I, let's not do the censorship game either. Let's talk to him and let's ask him yeah. first fucking question you get, Lawrence. Hey, what the hell? You know, what What were you doing? Is, is, is this true? Tell us some information. And I think everybody needs to really reach out to these guys that have made mistakes and say, look, you've messed up. Here's a chance to, to, to make it right. Apologize. Or, or maybe, you know, maybe we don't have all the facts. Either way, anywhere you go, once you establish yourself as a creeper, you're going to get the question. But that doesn't mean that we're going to censor you. Yeah. It means you're going to have to answer for yourself. And I, what I think do you do if he doesn't go. answer? Like, what do you do if someone yeah. is just, like, won't acknowledge that they have had problematic behavior in the past? Yeah, and I think I think that's why we have Me Too, is because it's it's the idea that the silence just can't can't keep going mm-hmm. on. So I say, I say, let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open, and let's address it. Well, that's but, a show whether, whether you. you get Lawrence Krauss or not, which would be wonderful, but that certainly is a, an, an ongoing topic, you know, that maybe we all should think about having on our, on were our you, show at one, one you, time or another. Were you with me, Nancy, uh, years ago when we met Lawrence Krauss and we uh, had a very brief interview with him? Were you there? Um, we, no, it was an imaginable no, religion at a convention, no. yeah. Did he touch you? <laughs> I just, How could you I resist? <laughs> no, no, but it's a funny story. I'll, I'll get into it really briefly. Uh, Lawrence Krauss was there, and I, as a good Canadian ambassador, I gave him a, a bottle of Crown Royal. Uh, and, and, and he looks at me and says, I can't bring this back to the States with me. He said, well, just have a drink here with your buddies. So he's having a shot, and he's giving a shot away. He has a shot, he's giving a shot. He has a shot, he's giving a shot. So after Ooh. a couple of <laughs> a couple of hours, he's looking a bit tipsy. And he's supposed to go on stage with Richard Dawkins oh to do a God. lecture. And I'm thinking, oh, my How God, I just Kevin? broke I just broke Lawrence Krause. He's going to do something stupid. He's going to fall off the stage. It's going to be on it's going to be on YouTube. And it's all my fault. <laughs> this is a great story. And, and, <laughs> and uh, Krause, you know, he was he was starting to get a bit flirty, too. There. He was uh, with oh. Jamie. Remember Jamie? Uh-huh. He's getting flirty. But, you know, after a couple of drinks, who isn't oh. right? And but he got on stage with uh, with uh, Dawkins. It was like. Switch, switch turned on. He just went through his lecture like he never had a drink in his life. It was absolutely wow. amazing. I was completely amazed and relieved, <laughs> very relieved, like a pro, like a pro. And he did grant us a little five minutes. See, what you that. didn't know is he's always drunk. It's like the Hulk, you know. Which <laughs> is <laughs> like, you won't like me when I'm angry, and he's like, well, the trick is that I'm always angry. Lawrence <laughs> is just drunk all the time. He has no, no idea. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, it explains his behavior. Yes, yes, absolutely. Robert, if uh, people want to hear more from you and want to find your podcast and follow you, where can he reach you? Uh, so obviously iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, uh, anywhere you get your, your podcasts at, um, the right to reason dot com as well. Uh, we're on YouTube, Patreon, all that jazz. So just just Google it. It'll pop up. Fantastic. Robert, you know, the uh, as, as Canadians, we are, we're allowed to actually offer an invitation, since you guys are under Trump, to come up here to Canada for the next couple of years. <laughs> all, you, all you have to do is you have to remember that we have stronger beer and hockey's better than baseball. That's all you have to remember. Yeah. That sounds awesome. And, and, and if you bump into inanimate objects, you have to apologize to That's them. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'm good with two out of three. <laughs> Just get a t-shirt that Thank says, so I'm much. sorry, you'll be covered. No problem. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Robert, before we let you go, can I have hey, you? Thank s- you so much. Uh, you guys have had some incredible guests on your show, and, and to be able to join those ranks is 
is just incredible well, are you kidding? and uh, you, 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 very, very laugh. humbling. And thank you for the opportunity. We got a whole podcast of laughing with you here. Are you kidding? I mean, I don't think there was yeah. any content. We just laughed with you the whole time. That was just fantastic. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. Get in the car and come on, drive up. We'd love to have you come up here. <laughs> Three weeks later. <laughs> oh, and congratulations on four years, guys. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So, so kind. Robert, before I let you go, can I have you say, hi, I'm Robert Stanley of the Right to Reason podcast, and I took a left to the valley. Hi, I'm Robert Stanley of the Right to Reason podcast, and I took a left at the valley. Gotta love that voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was Robert. What a, what a, what a nice He's like my new guy. best friend, I think. I, I just think love that so. guy. He's fantastic. So. He actually listens to us. <laughs> wow. Like I mean, that's the whole point of the guys, show, that we have an audience. Guys, but, I think you know, we might be kind of popular. Yeah, you sit at the popular kids' I table. Think, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I go that far, um, but I guess we should maybe also uh, wink, wink, and uh, send a salutation to his wife, who apparently <laughs> sometimes <laughs> listens to us when they're doing. Oh my else. god! <laughs> You'd have to bring that up again. <laughs> oh, that, that was that was a lot of fun. I, that was be, a great yeah. fun. I love the man. He's just yeah. fantastic, and I think he's got a very bright future in podcasting. Oh yes. yeah, oh, absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And thank you to Robert Stanley, our guest. And we'll be looking forward to hearing much more from him in the future. You can follow us at leftatvalley.com. You can follow us at uh, Facebook, at pa- Twitter, at TV Podcast. Send us an email, leftatvalley at outlook.com. Send your complaints to Nancy on the third floor. Absolutely. What else do we have to say about that? And you can uh, give us a five star review. That would actually help. It helps the show, helps other people find the show, too. Coming up. A new year happens. Next week, we're talking to Ethan Siegel about the science of Star Trek. Yay! Yet again. (laughs) Again? And then, for the 7th, which happens to be my birthday, by the way. Oh, that's right. Nudge, nudge. Hint, hint. Your 50th? My, no, my 60th, right? Yeah. We're talking to singer songwriter Shelly Siegel. I, I am so excited for that. She's I've actually, amazing. I've actually put special worship as a memo on my... Oh. <laughs> on the 14th, we're talking to Crystal Child Jessica Schwab. That's going to be interesting. And on the 21st, we're talking to Hector Garcia about the psychology of religious oppression. Oh, that's going to be awesome. And at uh-huh. the end of April, we're talking to Ben Davis and nuclear power. Mwahaha. Oh. Lots of great things coming down the road here. Absolutely. Well, when don't we have great things coming down the road? Well, you know, when you get high quality uh, guests like Robert was today, I mean, do you not have a blast with this guy? Come on. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. No. Totally man crush on Robert here. Totally man crush. <laughs> Robert, we love you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Anything else we need to say? No, no. <laughs> Joking, yes. No, happy, uh, happy fourth anniversary. Do, and read yes. Harry Potter book, guys. Read Harry Potter book. Guys. Read Harry Potter book. Oh, read any yeah, of them. Of They're all great. That. Especially if you're a librarian. <sighs> read Harry Potter if you are a librarian. <sighs> the Comments of Christina and not necessarily those of Lift of the Valley <laughs> subsidiaries of blah, blah, blah. Thank you, guys. Until next time. isn't real, but Jesus is, or Zeus, so a myth for Vishnu, you don't believe in them, I think the reason is apparent, you do what you're told, and believe in the God assigned by your parents, I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen, I call it how I see it, I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith, and unsubstantiated claims, that's something to be ashamed, I'm an atheist, 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 Let me take a sec, don't mean to sound so hateful But I swear to God, pun intended, I find it disgraceful The thousands of children are raped by priests And since they're holy men of God, they get away scot-free And the Pope does his very best to keep it on the hush Don't wanna affect business, he loves money too much We know that they love the kids, but how the fuck can we protect them While they planning to molest them, we teaching them to respect them Respect them The system is broke down, working backwards in the only action of tactic I plan to practice now is to attack them. The parties of God's hands are bloodstained, millions of murders by believers, and they're all in God's name. And let me take a sec, don't mean to sound so hateful, but I swear to God, pun intended, I find it disgraceful. That many atheists are told to be quiet, you're not alone, speak your mind, time to let it be known. 
Phenomenal.